Let's get loaded on lands down. Oh, end of the season. Tall boy, too. Gonna drink a tall boy to uh, finish off this Red Sox season. Uh, what are we on, Andy? 89? 89. Right, welcome to episode 89. Of the it's, Ron, it's, it's, it's Rob Gronkowski's third favorite number. Yeah. <laughs> After 79. And, of course, in first place. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to episode number 89 of the Loaded on Lands Down Red Sox Baseball Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Jacaris. Alongside me always virtually is Andrew Andrews. And uh, today is the, uh, is the end of the Red Sox season. They will not make the playoffs. No surprises there, considering that I believe this is their third worst season in franchise history as far as winning percentage goes. Yeah, worse since like 60, right? It's, it's been a long time, right? Yeah, like 60, worse than 65. Yeah. Uh, 2012 was pretty bad, but it's not even, it doesn't even rank. You have to go way back to like those, those, the 1930s where the Red Sox were just like abysmal and, um, so um, and we're going we're gonna to get into all of that, um, just the season in general being <clears throat> awful. Um, <laughs> you a big bag of crap. For, for so many different reasons. Um, if you keep me staring over here, the game is on in the background. Andy and I wanted to um, do our last podcast with like a couple of innings left in the Red Sox game, just so we could kind of see what's going on. The Red Sox are, 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 uh, are playing pretty well today. And, uh, yeah, they are – now they're leading, playing fine. Yeah, leading eight to one, and uh, this seems to happen a lot when the Red Sox. The years I can remember when the Red Sox are suck bag teams. Yeah. It does seem like they kind of make a look at the end of the season. They just kind of all of a sudden like, oh, we know how to play baseball. Or they're wicked good, like in 2011, and they literally lose every game for the next for, for the next yeah. couple of months. Uh, but, man. Yeah, we'll 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 get to that in a minute. Um, in any case, so uh, the big news today. Um, Earlier today, it was right after I woke up. Um, Ron Renicky, uh, manager of the Red Sox, will not be back um, for 2021. He was not fired. Uh, he was allowed to manage um, today in the dugout, uh, but they will not be renewing uh, his contract. Not it's over. Yeah, it's over. I mean, it's no, no, no. Is he sober today in the dugout? Oh, is he sober? <laughs> Come on, like. I don't know. I don't what know. What are they gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If he, I don't know if he's a drinker. Maybe he's, uh, maybe he's all banged up in there, and uh, maybe he's got like a little, uh, a little, a little nip under his mask, and he just keeps going. Like, oh, he's got the, he's got the wine bag. He's got the wine yeah. bag with the two. I uh, when was uh, this leak? Was this leaked or was it like an official? No, it was it was official. Yep. Does that happen before the last game? Is that a? I've never. I can't remember ever hearing that. Um, I think it has happened before where a couple of managers have been, you know, they've told them, hey, look, we're, you know, you're not going to be back next year. And they let them finish up. That, that would be something that leaks. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I just. Well, I guess the, the word on the street. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Kid. We're yelling over each other. But you finish the season and then you go, all right, we're going to talk after. And I don't, especially this season, it's such a who cares season anyways. What's the point of, like, making it a big thing in a spot like that? This is his last – it's not like they're going to retire his jersey. Well, yeah. He's not going to run around the park high-fiving everybody. <laughs> high-fiving the, car the cardboard cutouts. Yeah. He's, not even, he's, he's not even at home, so that doesn't even make sense. He's just running around Atlanta, the streets. <laughs> yeah, like, like, his like, Red Sox jersey. Woo! I'll, I'll catch a charter – I'll catch a uh, uh, regular flight home. I just want to run through the streets. So um, during the Patriots game, that they, they, they released this. Right before the Patriots game. It's very Boston Red Sox. <laughs> yeah. Well, to answer your question, though, uh, High and Bloom said that they were going to have a talk Tuesday, and they figured they'd give him the courtesy of being able to uh, kind of, you know, have some closure with the players. I mean, I don't – I mean – they can't yeah. do that behind closed doors. You know, right. you know what I mean? Come on. I'm sure there's been a million times where the coaches were like, all right, boys, I'm not going to be here next year. You know what I mean? Right, exactly. That's just I, – But, I, I mean, I don't – I mean, did anyone think that he had – that he was going to be here? No, 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 no. I don't, I don't think that's anything. Yeah. And, look, I, I don't want to – I don't want to get too much into Ron Renneke because I, I, I think I've admit – we've admitted this on the podcast before. 
I have watched, now this will be, um, and I'm not even lying here, like from start to finish, this will be my second Red Sox game that I've watched every pitch of every inning. Oh, yeah, I've watched maybe. Right? This, I was going to say three, but I think I'm lying. Twice. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had the games on. I've had the games on the radio. I've had the games on, and I'm kind of bopping around my house. I'm kind of listening here and there. But to sit down and to dedicate three hours to this team with my eyes glued to the TV this year uh, between COVID because, like, you know, if I if it was a nice day or if it's a nice night and I'm able to get out and do something, I'm going to get out and do it, man. I mean, you know, it's just it was just one of those things where – you know, uh, I'm not going to pass up an opportunity to uh, do something with my kids or whatever, because there's not a lot of places to go and not a lot of things to do. So, you know, that was part of it. But um, I, I think, you know, look, Ron Renicky did what he needed to do. He was calm. He was an even keeled presence. Um, he had, I mean, through no fault of his own. Okay. Nothing about the Red Sox hitting lineup was an issue really not, not really not not really i mean they they were nothing, able to, nothing was great they were they were i mean it, it's not 2018 right no. but they still had guys that could go out and hit you know they lost chris sale they traded david price and then they lost erod to the covid complications by that time we all knew it was over yeah. it was over and you just needed you know uh a steward you know, to, 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 take, to take the helm until um, someone else gets in there next year. Now, interestingly enough, so Hyam Bloom, uh, I saw a little uh, interview with him. They had a Zoom call with all of the, uh, you know, all of the uh, media and the press and so forth. And it was like, you know, the question, he's berated with Alex Cora questions. And um, of course. And, you know, I'm like, no way, man. No way is Alex Cora coming back. They wouldn't do that. And and but listen, here, here's the thing, right? So Bloom says, Bloom said to the media, he said, um, whatever we had to say about Alex Cora not returning to the Red Sox because of you know the um, punishments put in place from the Astros fallout, he says, you know those those <clears throat> things are are still the case right now. And, you know, that's what I kind of figured, you know, I kind of figured it was like, all right, look, you had a great time with Cora. You won a world series. Uh, it's time to move on. I know the organization loves Cora though. So I'm saying to myself, uh, do I buy this or do I not buy this? Because by the way, high and bloom, I listened to him talk uh, a couple of times today um, in that press conference. And then during the game, they played a couple of clips as, as, as a guy who wants uh you know, specific information on things. I mean, he makes Bel Bill Belichick look like, you know, the most specific uh, uh, guy ever. He just, he talks in, in generalities and he, he talks and says absolutely nothing. So I don't know how to read, I don't know how to read the guy. I don't know how to read High and Bloom yet. But I, I think Cora could be a Bloom kind of guy. I, I know it's the idea that he wants to bring in his own dude. He's been at one organization. So, I mean, unless he's going to get Joe Madden to come over. Like, what, what other his dudes are really, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, to your point. So, Carabas thinks it's a, it's a possibility. Really? And, um, you know, he says, who, you know, it's not about bringing in your own guys. It's about bringing in the right guy. And the Red, Red Sox fans and the team love Alex Cora. So, for Carabas, he says it's all about – And he can do the job. Right. And he obviously can do the job. And, you know – uh, he's credited, Alex Cora is, for getting Erod over that kind of hump of, like, laziness, where Cora, like, chewed him out. You know, he's like, get, you know, get your fat ass out there and do what you That's need to do. a very big hump. Right. It was, uh, it was a huge hump. It was a giant <laughs> hump. Speaking of huge humps, I, Pablo Sandoval is on the Braves. He made a couple of, he made a couple of plays today, and then one, one play off Pablo. One, one, one ball went through his legs. Did you see that? It hit third base and oh, yeah. went through his legs. Oh, it was so Pablo and her. He's going to have a big hit in the playoffs. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. He'll, like, <laughs> that's why they got him. Honestly, this is the first game he's ever played for the Braves. Yeah. So he could make the playoff roster. Anyway, um, so uh, Carabas thinks it's Cora. Remy and Eck think Cora, because they were talking about it on the broadcast. They really? think it's a possibility. So, so guys that are smarter than me and that are more dialed in, and Carabas said, look, what the Red Sox will probably do is 
they'll probably, you know, because they're so image conscious, they're going to float things out there and they're going to, you know, run their Twitter, uh, you know, algorithms or something and yeah. see what the fans think. And you know what? Ultimately, I think it boils down to this and uh, Karabas nailed it uh, as usual, but he said, you know, Red Sox fans will love it. Yeah. The rest of the country will hate it and they'll talk shit. Kind but, of. But, ulti- but ultimately, who, I, I mean, are you not going to hire a guy because a Seattle Mariners fan is like, cheater? But you know what, though? The Red Sox have the benefit of, they've kind of seen Texas. And listen, has, you know what I mean? They've had the whole, Hu- I'm sorry, Houston. So Houston, yeah. they've been able to watch Houston this year to see kind of what the blowback is. It's the same thing. Right. What's the blowback? And it's, People are crapping on Houston, but it's not a huge thing. You know what I mean? Like, people aren't really talking about it anymore. Right. So I, I have think an, I, Red Sox, that could be a good sign that, well, maybe people really aren't talking about it anymore. Right. Yeah. No, you're, you're absolutely right. And I think, honestly, uh, in the, the joke at the beginning of the pandemic was uh, Houston, like, lucked out. But guess what? They did. Not having fans. Is, yeah, they did. Board. Yeah. They did luck out. Every now and then you get a rowdy cardboard guy, but it's very rare. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to toss him out. You're, you're usually well behaved. Yeah. yeah, settle down. You're getting a little too crazy. All right, so basically from this season, just want to break down the good and the bad, Andy, and, and, and uh, jump in whenever. Let's, so, do, let's do the good first. Cause that'll be yeah, good. we're going to do the good first. Um, because, because, you know. Yeah, because he, here's the thing. Uh, Xander Bogarts. As, as usual, 295, 10 home runs. This is before uh, – he had a home run today. So I know. But this is before today. 295, so let's say 11 home runs. Uh, you know, if you, if you break that out from a six-month season, he would have hit 30 home runs. Led uh, the team in stolen bases. Uh, Vasquez, uh, 283 with seven home runs. His um, offensive prowess from last year looks like he's figured it out with the bat. He's matured. You want that out of a catcher. Your catcher's hitting 283. You're psyched. I am. Um... I'm still not sold on him with a full gear because he had he hit 283 because he hit like 18,000 the beginning of the season. You know what I mean? So well, he yeah he dipped a little bit, but he brought it back. He hit a grand slam yesterday, so I mean he, he's had a pretty good year. Uh, Jackie Bradley 276, six home runs again. That's in a 60 game season. You spread that out. Jackie Bradley's not going to hit 276. I mean, you're making my point. He's a, he's a free, <laughs> he, he's a free agent. We're going to talk about him in a little bit. Oh my, yeah. Um, I think some – now we're talking about some real positives here because I think with Bogey and Vasquez, you know what you kind of have, right? Yeah. Um, JBJ is a free agent. We'll talk about that. Uh, Verdugo was way better than I expected. Um, oh, way his, better. His defense was phenomenal. His energy that he brought to the team was phenomenal. He is not Mookie Betts. I am not comparing him to Mookie Betts. If I could trade him back for Mookie Betts, I wouldn't in second. But I will have to say this. I like him. I like Verdugo. Did you think did you think he hit over 300? 308, six I home did not runs. I think so, yeah. Six home runs. Uh, he led the team in four offensive categories. Um, you know, he actually finished with the better uh, uh, batting, you know, regular season batting average than Mookie Betts. Mookie yeah. Betts had 10 more home runs than he did. But, I mean, you know, look, he's, he's, not, he's not a power guy. He's going to hit some, but he's not a huge power guy. But I was – his defense no. was great. His attitude was great. He is going to play so well at Fenway Park. Yeah. With with the fans' energy uh, backing him, because he, he was an exciting player. I liked watching him play. The replacement of a superstar doesn't have to play the exact same position. You, you know what I mean? Right. You, can, you can replace people in other places, and that's what, you, what they need to do. But as far as just a more than serviceable outfielder, I better than I thought, really. The, the fact that he hit over 300, I did not think that was even – remotely a possibility for this and, year. And this is his first year as a like a regular starter. He had 16 doubles too, which uh leads the team. It ties with yeah. a couple of the guys who lead the team. So he he's got some pop too. Yeah, I think he led in uh OBP and you know he led in a lot of different categories. So uh it was fun to watch him. You know, uh so you know I don't want to talk about the Kevin Ploweckis of the world, you know, the backup catchers. They they're not in the Red Sox future. He had a great season. That's fine. Whatever. I don't want to you talk get a backup about catcher. Uh, yeah, you, you, you go to Macy's, you walk yeah, in. Not, you not, not a part of future. He had a great season. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, see you later. Uh, and of course, Bobby Dahlbeck, 273, eight home runs, third on the team. The kids started playing three weeks ago. Yeah. Third most home runs on the team and uh, in 87 plate appearances. So Devers led the team in home runs. Uh, 
Yep. And he got 242 plate appearances. He, he hit 11 home runs. He had and, 65 strikeouts. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we'll get to Devers in a second. So as far as pitching goes, look. Or than a strikeout a game. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, I mean, Bobby, Bobby Dahlbeck is, is in the Red Sox future. He was one of the bright spots. Verdugo's in the Red, in the Red Sox future. He's a bright spot. I worry um, about the, the positioning with Dahlbeck because he really is a true first baseman. He's got to play first base. I really hope that De- I, I hope before that Devers' future was at first base. So that, yes. that does kind of bum me out a little bit there. Well, we we're going to talk about that. Good about, problem to have, but yeah. we're going to talk about that in about one minute here. Yeah. All right. So as far as the pitching goes, only two bright spots for me. Uh, Nathan Evaldi did pitch well this year. He had his it, look six sixty games or not. He had a, he had a little stint on the DL. Don't hurt. Uh, yeah. Hurt. Uh, but look, he ended up he ended up with a three seventy two ERA. Uh, he went four and two. Uh, he struck out a bunch of dudes. He 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 was who we knew he was. Again, he's probably lucky that it was a sixty game stint because he probably would have gone on the DL two or three more times. Uh, he he almost he, he almost needs to be in a six man rotation, you know. Uh, exactly, which which might happen. Which um, be, which and then of course, football, yeah. yeah. I mean, we'll see. <laughs> that's 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 what we're going to wrap up this podcast with. But. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, Tanner Houck was the uh, best thing that happened this season for me, seeing him pitch the last three games. Uh, 0-5-3 ERA with 17 innings pitched, six hits, one earned run, 21 strikeouts in three games. Avaldi led the team with 52 strikeouts in 48 innings pitched. And Houck had 21 strikeouts in 17 <laughs> innings pitched. So, I mean, you know, you double those numbers, and he's right there with Avaldi who throws gas and um, – you know, someone was like, you know, some talking head was like, he has a chance to crack the rotation next year. I'm like, a chance to crack the rotation? No, going into Who the hell else is going to crack the rotation? Yeah. Unless you sign s- stupid free agents. It's dumb. I'd like to think he's your fourth best pitcher. Like, if he's your number four on a really good pitching staff, you're in good shape. And I, I, may, Maybe a third. Maybe. I mean, I, I don't think he's a, a number one on someone's staff. I, I don't Not think right he's now. He's, been throw, he's pitched three games in the majors. Yeah. No, but I'm just saying what the stuff he got, and I don't think he throws hard enough. But I think I think he can be a solid three or four. I agree. Uh, you want to add anything to that list about the good? Um, The good? Eh, well, Martin Perez. Yeah. I, I think he was, I, sort of, he was sort of my meh. Like, I think. He did better than I, I, I thought. We're gonna we'll talk about him in a, in a minute too. We're gonna wrap up some thoughts on him. Um, I wanted Chavez to be good, and I thought in the beginning of the season he was gonna be part of the good, and that just went bad. Which is, <laughs> which brings us to the bad. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, go. So look, I, Raphael Devers, I wasn't impressed with him this year. Um, he had he had some power numbers. Um, Two he got a lot of he got a lot of his numbers after the team was absolutely done and no one gave a fuck. Two two sixty five batting average. He made fourteen errors, uh, which is he looked eight, oh, he looked lost in, in the field at times. Eight ninety one fielding percentage. Um, I mean, he oh led the team God. in RBIs. I just I just thought it was a, a regressive season for him. We always knew that he could hit for power. Um, you know, he he's he's a pretty good hitter. You know, he can slap it around. Um, I worry about how he showed up. You, I, I, the self-discipline. I yeah. worry about the fact that it didn't look like he was ready to play baseball. It didn't look like he was working out. I, you know, going all the way back to your little thing on on the the, the interweb there. I just um. Oh yeah, the Zoom call. Yep. I I I want him to be more of a professional. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's only like twenty two, so he's got to learn that. Yeah. Um, you know, he's going to be ready to go for next year. Regardless, yeah. you know, so let's, let's, let's call this a wash for De- Devers. He had some moments. I think he had, he, he, he did something. Well, someone just did something. Who the hell was that? Oh no, that was a replay. Okay. I worry he might have a little Tyler Sagan in him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of, yeah, a little bit of, not, bad, not, not, not nearly the other extracurricular stuff. I'm not yeah, saying. He's not banging other people's uh, lives. I don't think, well, I don't think he's doing drugs or stuff like that. Like <laughs> we have, Tyler Sagan was a, you know, apparently doing Molly and stuff like that. Yeah, you know I mean? allegedly. But um, like he just seems like he's not as focused as he needs to be. So ho- hopefully, he's still got time to mature. But well, he does. He does love his mom. At the point though, where when you're 22, but as far as like time to mature, with 22, 23, like it's it, it needs to happen. Right there. Yeah. Right there. All right. Uh, JD Martinez was awful this year. 
Uh, 214, 214 average. He did hit a home run today. So I had him here for six home runs, uh, but seven. He was not even in the top 12 for the Red Sox for uh, wins above replacement this year. That's terrible. Yeah. He, he looks clueless at the plate. He looked like he was just, you know, swinging at nothing. And, you know, the good news is all reports are that he, he's going to opt into his $38.5 million. <laughs> was a, was a, yeah. Was it, do you think it was the whole video thing where they couldn't watch video because of the, you know, I don't know. How can that have that much of an effect? Well, if, if, if it's that, if you can't, if you can't watch video during the game, right? I mean, are you saying not, cheating watching video or are you saying actually watch, just watch it for like a performance reason, not like cheating video? No, like he wants to see, like he yeah, has okay. a bat and then he goes and he wants to, he breaks down his own swing yeah. and he breaks, not like trying to pick up any signs, but that was his, that was his MO after every at bat, whether he got a hit or whether he didn't get a hit, he would go down in the, down in the tunnel. He would he would check out the check out the video, so I mean because he's not stealing bases, he's not doing any of that stuff. So I mean, I don't know. Uh, I don't think his head was in it, Andy. To be honest with you, it, it goes back to that Zoom, uh, that goes back to that Zoom call where he's like, "Yeah, I'm fishing with Mike Napoli." Uh, you know, like I just think he is he's a creature of routine, and his routine got screwed up, and I, I think it screwed him up. So he looked awful. Call it a wash, you know, and these when they sign these contracts it's so well the, the players thing the player can opt out and this is when that player opt out just bites you in the fucking ass absolutely um more bad um yeah. michael more bad michael chavis was awful this year um awful i i just i don't see a future for this guy neither do eck and remy eck and remy were talking about it today they said you know he's trying to make himself he's trying to make the club and he's trying to stick around in the club by being versatile. He's tried every position. Right? So he can play first, third, second, left field. Okay? That inning, that inning um, last week in left field where he missed two line drives right to – oh, it looked like a Little League kid screwed up in the outfield. Yeah, that was like Hanley Ramirez-esque out there. Um, so I mean, and to their point, you know, he's trying to – at this point, he's just trying to stick around with the big club and become a utility guy – but you, you can't be a utility guy until you, like get until you get the at bats. Yeah. Like like you're not. It, 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 I, I don't see a future for him. He's not the right type of hitter to be a utility guy either. You know what I mean? Like you need to be more of a um, contact hitter, a lot less right. strikeouts, not worried about trying to put the ball all the way over the the screen. But you know, and. That's just not – he's not that type of player. Nope. You know what I mean? He swings for the fences every time. Yeah, no, three mad cuts every time. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Andrew Benintendi was a d disaster this year. I know he got hurt. I, I think, think his I think his days are numbered. I do. Yes, I, I mean, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna move him for a couple of water bottles. But yeah, I, I mean, he's, he's, he's cheap. Uh, but, you know, I don't know, you know, I don't know what kind of options he has for next year, but – We'll see how the Red Sox approach that, you know, because that ultimately that's not High and Bloom's guy, and uh, you know he had a good season in 2018, and uh, not not so great this he, year at all. When he was coming up, he was projected to be like a eight out of ten, a nine out of ten. You know what I mean? Like that kind of that kind of dude. Right now, he's two eighty, like yeah, like a two eighty twenty home run guy. He's like a three out of ten right now. He, yeah. he sucks. He ended, I mean, not that this, like, matters as far as because, you know, we're looking at at-bats here, but he basically, he had the lowest batting average on the Red Sox this year. He hit 103. Maybe yes. Maybe yes. Remember that? There was Those a couple days. minutes. There was a couple minutes where he, we thought he was our guy. All right, and uh, finally, the, uh, the worst part about this year was the relief pitchers and the openers. Uh, they had a 566 ERA, which is far – uh, by far the worst in baseball. I th there is no but besides the, the starting pitchers who we've talked about, I, I I can't really think of anybody on that pitching staff who I give a shit whether they're here or not next year. Nope, uh, me neither. 
Sounds not good. one person. Like when we talk about Barnes, we talk about Darwinian, we talk about Brazier, like any of those dudes. Like if they're here and they're pitching mop up in the seventh, whatever. But yeah, yeah I'll, wa- I'll watch Scott Wins and Hernandez throw a thousand miles an hour if the Red Sox beat the Yankees by thirteen runs and he's in the in the seventh inning. Hit the I'll ball. <laughs> yeah, hit the ball. It's in. anyway. All right. So season overall, I want to I want to give you my thoughts, and I'm going to let you go. All right. All right. Uh, obviously, this is mo- the most depressing season uh, that I've ever experienced, 2012 included, 2011 included. Um, this is the first time since 1978 I have never been to a Red Sox game in person. And I did, I did feel that. It, it absolutely sucked. We started loaded on Lansdowne thinking that we would actually be able to get loaded on Lansdowne because you and I go to games I know, every, right? every year. Um, news came out this week that uh, Mookie bat. Oh, let me just backtrack. So to, to, to not go to Fenway Park for me, even when they're bad, because I think you and I went to, didn't you and I go to the last game of 2012? Yes, we did. And we like sat wicked close. We, we, we were like, right up. We had fun. We, we had yeah, like third row up. seats. There was no one there. We had a blast. Uh, so even when, you know, times are bad with the team. You can still go to a baseball game and have fun and drink beer and eat eat terribly and be fat lard. Listen, and- even when the creator of the rap was the manager, <laughs> it, it's still you. <laughs> want- he wears fake mustaches in the dugout. Yeah, you know what I mean. You still watched it because it was goofy, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's it's like, it's less it's fun right. to do that. It's less fun to do that from home. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean. You know, people can say what they want about baseball being a boring sport, but when you go there in person, I, I, I personally have a blast. It's such a great scene. Uh, very depressing this year for me uh, to not uh, to not be able to go. And to piggyback on that, um, you know, I did plan to take my kids to Pawtucket a lot this year as well. So to see them not be able to have their season, we talked about this when when that fin- when that thing finally happens with Worcester, I think they should give Pawtucket one last game. Uh, you know, I think that would be good, but I think, I think that sucked. Um, but as far as the Red Sox go, so real quick to Mookie Betts, it was announced this week that Mookie Betts has the highest, uh, had the highest selling, uh, Jersey in baseball this year, which is very, very interesting to me because, so he surpassed, uh, Aaron judge okay? wow. as a Dodger. Which I, know. I think, which I think is very, very the Dodger interesting. Dodger jersey is the best. Dodger song. jersey. Uh, you know, that, that might be a testament to how much the rest of the country hates us as, as, a, as a, uh, a sports fan base, uh, or they just embrace Mookie Betts because he's like the best. I will never, it, you know, it hit me when I read that article that, you know, it's so funny because it aligns so perfectly with Babe Ruth and the last pandemic. We yeah. had as as a uh, you're right. It's like every hundred years there's a there's a shit storm uh, a coming. So for the Red Sox general manager in you know the next hundred years, okay, don't trade your best player. And for the for the citizens of the world, okay, yeah, don't, like get ready because it's coming. And the but, Mookie Betts thing, I, 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 can't, I can't get over it, dude. I, it, it's, it's, it really upset me today thinking about the last game of the season. It, it, and the bill of sales, too, though, because it was kind of pitched through back doors and stuff. But you, but you heard this clearly through the Red Sox media machine that, well, we have J.D. Martinez for this year, and then he's going to opt out, and then we're going to have all this money, so we're going to be fine. And guess what? He's not opting out. He fucking sucks. And you're going to have to now make do with – because that money's not going away. So either they're going to become a huge spending team, and I know they can go above the luxury tax maybe if they want. eh, But you don't bring in Bloom to go way above the luxury tax. So it's the fact that what they sold us as, oh, this is going to happen, it really is frustrating. Right. So, so that's a, a good segue into what's next, right? I mean, what's, what's next for the Red Sox? Uh, you know, to, and to your point, you know, JD, JD Martinez given a huge contract, Mookie Betts is huge contract traded. Uh, David Price is huge contract traded. Um, I mean, how many huge contracts do they have on the team? They have sales, I guess. 
uh, of all these contract is he's overpaid, but I wouldn't call it insurmountable. It's shorter money too. It's right. not many years. So, I mean, you know, yeah. what, what's next for the Boston Red Sox, Andy, moving forward in this, in, in these, in these unprecedented times. I'll tell you what better not be next. Okay. Cause I've seen this swell start to happen on social media and some of these loser Facebook groups. Okay. Is this, well, you know, we didn't sign, we didn't sign Mookie Betts, but we can fix the ship. We, we have a chance now. We're going to re-sign Jackie Bradley Jr. Are you kidding me? I, these, anyone who thinks that is even remotely a replacement or something that's better, who thinks those two people, Jackie Bradley doesn't even have the right to sniff Mookie Betts' jockstrap, okay? He, Jackie Bradley is best when he's a good player on a really great team. You know what I mean? He, he's one of those dudes. So I don't even want to hear about re-signing Jackie Bradley Jr. I, I, unless it is a, some crazy team-friendly deal that's – other than that, I don't want it. These people have to calm the fuck down. Mm-hmm. You're going to actually extend yourself at all for Jackie Bradley, I think is maddening. Andy, I, I am so with you, and we didn't even talk about this before uh, the podcast – I would have I would rather have the Red Sox re-sign Kevin Pillar, who's gonna be a free agent. And I get it. The Red Sox had to trade Kevin Pillar because they knew they weren't going anywhere. He was he was playing great. They knew they had value for him. And he's a and he's an alleged white supremacist. But you're besides that. Is he really? No, it was the whole <laughs> it was just, yeah, there was that whole thing though, right? With the, the Oh yeah, like, like he didn't want to stand or yeah. something. Yeah, I, I or I didn't remember, if you're not hundred percent for something, you're hundred percent the other way. Uh, oh my god. I, I, you know, that's that's the other I don't want to get too political here, but, no, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, but, he, but here's the thing here's, I just want to say this. Like you can you can agree that black lives matter and also agree that the police are important. Like you can I, I know it's crazy. I know it's crazy, but both are, call, both are true statements. Yes. call me crazy, but I, I don't want black people to die, but I also want, I also support my local police department. Call me crazy. Both are very true statements. Oh my God. Anyway, um, I would rather, I would rather have them sign Kevin Pillar than Jack. Yeah. I would rather sacrifice the defense. I know he made a great play today. He looked up over the fence and he, and he pulled it down. I get it, but I, I just think that there are other ways that you can win ball games other than I mean, how many times, how many times a game does Jackie Bradley have the opportunity to jump over a fence and rob a home run? No, it's it's awesome. It's a highlight. It's but he's it's, up four times a game. He's I up know. four times a game. That's what's more important to me. Like. The Mookie Betts thing isn't a reason to be sentimental for like I don't want I didn't want them to sign Mookie Betts because I'm sentimental. I, I'm a I'm a Jersey guy. I just happen to think the guy who wears Mookie Betts jersey should make a lot of money, and I want him on my team. Okay, the guy in the Jackie Bradley jersey, smell you later. Yeah. Hey, you tweeted out uh, a couple of years ago. You were like. I can't envision right now, the day when, when Mookie Betts doesn't play for the Red Sox, and I don't want to envision that day, you know? So, I mean – And the fact – he had a good year. Don't get me wrong. This, this is for him um, – what? Uh, he bet 276, uh, 787 OPS. I mean, for him – This is JBJ. Yeah. Yeah. This is a career year for him. Mm-hmm. You should go find someone else to give you a lot of money. I, I, somebody will. Somebody will. Peace, brother. Thank you very much. Honestly, and I and, and I agree too. And by the way, I also I also do think it stinks that Jackie Bradley was not able to get the type of send off from Fenway Park that he needed. I agree. Because I I mean, look, I, we're, I don't want I don't want our listeners to think we're dumping on him because he's a part of Red Sox history. He really absolutely. is. Absolutely. And Playoff MVP. I mean, like, no. Yep. And, uh, you know, I saw him make a lot of great plays out there. Um, you know, who knows? I mean, are they going to move Devers to first, to your point? Are they moving Dahl back? If they keep Devers at third base, he has to be better. He has to be better. Yeah, you can't. You because can't have not, there a 
an error a week. He, he does. Gets, he doesn't. He doesn't just make errors. Here's the thing. He doesn't just make errors like a ground ball and he boots it. He makes a lot of throwing errors too. Those are and those kill you. So I mean, you gotta you you know you gotta do the throwing something. errors when people get two bases when runs score. You, you know what I mean? Like the under the leg error, guy save it first. Okay, we move on. It's when you start throwing the ball around the field. It's right. Yeah. What's what's next with the uh, with the pitching staff? So you had mentioned earlier, Perez was kind of like one of your uh, bright spots. So Jason Most- uh, Mastrodano of the Boston Herald uh, wrote an article a couple of days ago. Maybe it was today. I don't know. I, I looked at it today. I didn't look at the date. Um, he said, if you're gonna pay, if you're gonna pick up his option, Perez's option, which was about seven million dollars, or six point something million dollars. If you're going to pick up that option, you need him to be better or you need to go younger. So in other words, if, if you're going to pick up a, 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 let's call it a $7 million. If you're going to pick up a $7 million option on this one guy, year? One, one year, you know, just the option, right? That's kind of like nothing. He, he has to be better than what he was. I think he was better than what we expected, but we also expected him to be the number five starter, Right. When, the, yeah. when he was signed, when he was signed, he was supposed to be the number five starter. So now he's like the number like two starter. So his, his argument is you either need to be better or you need to get younger. I see. So if you're going to pay someone seven million bucks to be your five starter, he needs to be – your five starter should be somebody who you're developing into a lower number. Exactly. That's a fair argument. If, if, if you have – now listen. That's a fair argument if you actually have a farm system, if you've redeveloped these things. So maybe we're not there yet. Maybe our number five guy just has to not suck right now. Right. Let, let Bloom do his job, which apparently he's good for two, three years from now. Your number five starter is your best guy from Pawtucket. You know what I mean? Exactly. But or, 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 you're, or you're trading parts for their parts, or you're, you're, you, know, you don't have a lot to trade right now. So – I mean, no. Or you're doing the Jay Groom thing. You're bringing Jay Groom up and you're saying, okay, kid, let's see. Tanner Hawk did it. Like, what, what are you, what are you going to do? Um, you know, some of these younger dudes. Now, um, you pick up his option and then move him for somebody younger. Yeah. Than well, I mean, you know, and then uh, uh, Nick uh, Pavetta who pitched today, um, you know, they like what they see in him. He, he's had a lot of problems, but you know, his ERA is like career ERA is like five. But, like, they've identified like some things. Problems, What's that? Like mental problems? Like throwing the ball over? No, stuff. no, no. Oh, it, um, they identified some issues with him. So, for some reason, you know how they always say keep the ball down in the zone? Yeah. So, Nick Pavetta was keeping the ball down in the zone, and he was just getting crushed. So, they, they worked with well, you him. Can't make it a golf, you can't make it a golf shot. No, <laughs> elevating, <laughs> elevating his fastball. And for some reason – it's it's worked for him. He's had he's had it, you know. He's he's only had a couple of starts for the Red Sox. You know, he's a, he's 27 years old, so he's not you know you're not looking at a, a 22, 23 year old. But I think uh, Mastrodano's uh, point was if you can find these guys and you can identify what you need to do to help them uh, be a little bit better. Um, I mean, look, it's just, it's just one of those things where, you know, even, even David Price had a couple of years in there where he was, he was a four ERA guy. I mean, you know, you he, had the, he had the pedigree, he had the name, but I mean, if you can find guys that are going to be sub four starting pitchers and they're young, trot them out there. You better make sure you got some good coaches if that's the plan though, you know, and well, isn't that what High Bloom is supposed to do? Isn't that what the Tampa Bay Rays do all the time? I don't know. Let's see it. That's having a lot of confidence in your coach. That's like that's like Belichick level confidence. You know what like, I mean? I bring in the I bring in the D two guy because I I can coach him up. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Belichick level confidence. Well, let let's see. You know, let's see what High and Bloom has to bring to the table because I mean, this is what we wanted. We we were psyched when they hired him. And, you know, I, I know things went sideways here, but, I mean, let, let's see if he can do it. You know, I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at free agent. I looked at free agent pitchers today, Andy. There's only one free agent pitcher that's under 30 years old. Really? And that's uh, uh, Taiwan Walker, 
right? Yeah. Uh, and 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 you know he's not bad. I mean he's got he had a three three eight four ERA career. Um, is that a guy you want to give four years to? I would to yeah. to, to solidify uh, some sort of rotation. But Tre, you know guys like you know Trevor Bauer is a is a uh, free agent. He's yeah. going to command fifteen million dollars a year, if if, yeah. if not more. I think he's a dickhead too. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Plus, yeah. Plus, you get to deal with this. I, I mean, I personally like how he stirs the pot. I don't know. I don't know if I want him on my team. No, but uh, you know what I mean. It's it's one of those things where like it is kind of funny every now and then, but eventually, if he's on your team, it's like, dude, we do this every time you start. Like, I do. We have to do this again. It's like you know, it's I just barking at dudes and everything else. Like, really, we're doing it again. Like, it's, I know. Hey, I mean, if I'm looking at a free agent pitching crop and I have a guy who's 28, yeah. I'll drop in on him. I mean, I'm almost like Trevor Bauer is one of those dudes where you want to go, do you find that the other team gets mad at you for being overexcited a lot? Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you find that your peers hate you because you talk <laughs> crap about them and then you get onto another team? <laughs> Do you always think it's the other team that's being assholes? <laughs> like, maybe it's you. <laughs> well, everyone's an asshole to me. Yeah, maybe it's you, dude. All right, Andy, you got anything else on this? Um, I, just, thoughts? I don't know where the Red Sox are. Are we – what are we accepting for next year? Well, are we rebuilding or are we doing the uh, – hey, we rebuild? reset the luxury tax. Is it a bridge? Are we just resetting and going? Are we – I'm not really sure. The Red Sox really haven't given that indication. That oh, Where are they right now? Am I okay with if they're they're kind of fighting for the, that, what, that second wild card and they don't get it, but an okay season? Am I okay with that because I'm seeing things building? Yeah, I mean, I think what the Red Sox have to do is they have to pull a 2013. And what I mean by that is they have to, they have to sign some guys that have stuff to prove. Yeah. And they have to sign them to short money and try to see if they can get anything out of them. And that is going to be a huge challenge. We've said that many times. I'll overpay for short money. Right. But the players don't, obviously the players don't want that. You know, I mean, you kind of want like a Cam Newton kind of deal, right? Absolutely. I was just about to say, right? I mean, yeah. you you want something like that. You want uh, maybe again, maybe a guy like Taiwan Walker. You say, listen, uh, we're going to give you a, a two year contract, uh, opt out option or something after after each year or something like that. You know, if you pitch great, da 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 da, and you know, we'll give you we'll give you ten million dollars, something along those lines. I don't even know if that's valid, but. I think it's dangerous to assume that Sale and Erod are ready to go next year. So. No, Sale uh, Sale's not going to be ready till mid uh, till June. Yeah, earliest. So and, you're not, you don't even have him. You have to you have to get some pitchers. You have no one in your minor league system. You're going to sign some free agent pitchers just to have people to fill spots. Yeah, I mean it. it, it they can't, can't go in the season. You, you can't be like three. this year. No, game three is to be determined. They can't no. do that. We use the most starting pitchers in the league this year. Uh, Zhu Wing Ling uh, Lin uh, pitched. You're making uh, names. Uh, uh, <laughs> what's, his, what's his name pitched? Plawecki uh, pitched or something. Uh, and then that um, the dude that they sent down, the second baseman, he pitched. I mean, yeah, position players pitching, it, it, it's a fiasco. Uh, I, I've seen the opener. I don't like the opener. I've seen it firsthand with us this year. You need to have five starting pitchers. Okay. No, and, I, I think the opener is kind of across baseball. I think the opener is kind of run its course and it's exposed teams that blow. Yeah. That, that don't really have a, a, a real roster. It, it's might be Tampa might be the only team that can pull it off. Well, the other thing too is, is like, you know, like if you look at Tanner Houck's, um starts, you know, I don't think he, I think he went past five innings once or something. Right. Yeah. I, mean, I, get, I get it. He's young, but, I think instead of an opener, you just, it, it's just, you just have to come to the realization that starting pitchers are only good for five innings. 
That six innings is an awesome start. Yep. Yeah. Like if you go that's six that's innings, it. if you go six innings, give up two runs, you're awesome. You're like, awesome. That's where we're at. You know, that's the guy who makes thirty to forty million bucks a year. Yeah. Six innings, fucking two runs. Gives you it gives you an hour hour and a half of work every five days. No, I'm just look. I'm oversimplifying. I know they put in the work, but I'm just saying like. Yeah, I mean, it's eventually just, people stop watching. Yeah. No, it's just it's just different from when we were growing up. Just different. yeah. All right, you got anything else? That's why the game should be seven innings. That's right, like the double headers this year. <laughs> all I right, it. I did not hate it at all. Uh, this is episode number eighty nine of the Loaded on Lands Down Red Sox Baseball Podcast. I'm your host Mark Chakaris. Alongside me, always virtually, is Andrew Andrews, and right. we, will, we will see you next week. Peace. <laughs>